Wi-Fi related calls, it is one of their biggest problems. Um, call centers are filling up and they have low insights and they don't really know how to fix a lot of them. So the Volo and Mesh uh, tries to fix one of the biggest problems, which is coverage, which we all know. But I bet everyone here has experienced uh, Wi-Fi being slow, you're not getting the service, you're not, things are stopping, even though you're really close to the router. And why is that? So that's what I'm gonna address. So, Domos is a Wi-Fi optimization inside company, uh, and what we try to do is get as good as possible in understanding what is Wi-Fi quality of experience. Uh, what kind of indicators can we look at to measure uh, the quality of experience delivered. So I'm going to take you a bit through the story about how we've done this. So we started uh, did some lab research, uh, different kinds of labs to determine what are the good quality of experience indicators. And it's a bit more complicated. Different services requires different parameters. Uh, and then when we figure this out, we partner up with an ISP and start measuring this every single second in almost 100,000 homes. And so the story is there, in Wi-Fi, the scarce resource is airtime, right? It's what we all share, is airtime. And a lot of the airtime is used by devices transmitting on low rates, and we're here to show you that there are causes not obvious for these low rates. So that's the general outline, so I'll just get into it. Here we started, I'm playing on my phone in a very expensive lab. Uh, we started getting into these different kind of labs, such an anechoic chamber, which has no reflections, with paracage, paracage cages, which has every kind of reflection, office environments, urban and rural, and we started digging into what is, what, what are the indicators that we can access on a router that shows the quality of experience? What, what can we look at to see, oh, that video stream is lagging, oh, that video conference is breaking down, or oh, that video game is not working as it should. So we did that, and we got quite a few learnings from that. All right, I'll do. Um, so, First of all, uh, in Wi-Fi, the scarce resource is airtime. Wi-Fi works like this, like only one, on one channel to one AP, only one person to one device can talk at a time. And how it works is the other devices listens, are anyone talking? If there is anyone talking, wait a random amount of time. And if the next time you try to talk, there's still someone talking, you wait another random amount of time, but with a bigger, bigger interval. Um, um, yeah. So we can measure that, the, the amount of airtime available to this router by looking at the number of transmit opportunities that are available. And we can uh, uh, separate uh, what comes from other Wi-Fi networks on the same channel or, or close channels and what comes from other kind of radiant noise and, and stuff like that. Uh, so that's, you know, that's what we all share and that's what we need. Uh, the next indicator are, are different kinds of retries, packet loss, retransmits. Uh, so obviously if you have to retransmit things several times, it takes a longer time, you get more latency, you get more jitter. And that's of course the next one, latency and jitter, is especially for real-time uh, services, is very, very important. But uh, I guess a lot of you would expect this, that the best indicators is just looking at the data rates things are sent on, the speeds of which you transmit. Okay, so why is this important? So, so if, if I talk very slowly, send a lot of data rates, I consume more airtime, and you have more collisions, you have even higher retransmit, you have re 
reduced uh, transmit opportunities and the latency and jitter increases. And then also on the layer on top of that, you know, you get um, a mix match in, in the TCP app because you have to retransmit over radio and, and you go back. So we started really collecting this data at a very, very high frequency. So we started collecting from, from these, these homes, we started collecting what data rate is every bit sent on. And we also coupled that with what kind of SNR is that sent on, what kind of RSSI, what kind of congestion levels, how many TX opportunities, what kind of devices, how many retries was there, what kind of retries, etc. cetera. Uh, so when we started doing that, we discovered something. So or I'll do the theory first. Yeah, I think everyone here knows this pretty well. I was surprised there are a lot of wave theory here. Uh, but you know, what are higher data rates? Well, higher data rates is squeezing more data into the same radio waves or sending several radio waves at the same time and, and using more data that way. But then when you increase uh, the modulation, you also increase your, your vulnerability for radio noise, which is always present, and you increase your uh, chance of having to retransmit something. So that's the general theory is that the better the signal strength, or the better the SNR is, uh, the higher should the rate be. That, that's, that's how it should be. And you can see here, like, when you reach a certain, here's a graph showing, showing uh, the bit error, error rate. And when you reach a certain SNR for each modulation scheme, you should come to a good enough, low enough uh, bit error rate. And this goes like this. So that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but what we've seen in the first graph is that here's comparing uh, Wi-Fi connections with, with RSSI, which is signal strength. And what you should see is like these, these kind of banana-shaped things going here, and here, and here, and here. But what we are seeing instead are well, there's some correlation, but as you can see, there's a massive spread here. And this spread shouldn't be here. You should have seen one of oh, this got AC, this got that standard, this got that many streams. As you approach just higher, higher sides, right? But again, there's this massive spread here, and we start thinking, okay, what is that? Why is that? Why do you have really high signal strength? And, and low data rate. It's not supposed to be like that. So, you know, in theory, you're supposed to have high signal strength, everything goes fast, everyone is super happy. And low signal strength, you are less happy. But what we're seeing is like, you can have really high signal strength and not good performance at all. Why, why is that? So you started, oh, so, okay, and why does this matter so much? So here, here's a graph I like to show that, you know, we share the same air time. And this is two graphs from 5 gigahertz only, okay? So here's about 7%, here I'm blocking <coughs> some, some, some rates. So, so about 7% of all data on 5 gigahertz is sent on rates below 10 megabits per second, 7%. Doesn't sound that much, but what really happens is that these seven percent of data consumes over eighty percent of all airtime. Makes sense, right? Because talking at one megabit rate is a hundred times slower than a hundred. So you just spend more airtime, and that's eighty percent of the airtime is spent on data rates that doesn't really give any good quality service or experience. And mm. also I have to mention that you know, these are the radio data rates, which, which does not translate directly to, to the data rates that a consumer would get. That's at least half. So it's really slow. And you know, if you can just 
remove this traffic from here to here, we can increase the available airtime by 70%, which is, or remove 70% like of all airtime usage by just a small tweak, and that makes sense. But we, we start digging more into, okay, well, again, why does this happen? Why do, do they send so much data? And yeah, like I talked about, in theory, there's like signal to noise ratio should pretty much define what data rate devices connect on. And you know, there are algorithms, uh, known algorithms for data rate selection. Most of them go through SNR or a combination of SNRI, which also takes congestion or other APs into account. And we also looked at things like number of connected devices, uh, number of neighboring networks, and, and packet loss to see if we can find, you know, do a statistical analysis and find what is causing this. And what we found was that for all our statistical analysis, all of these things, which supposedly should account for everything, accounts for less than 50% of the lower rates. Like, and is that that? doesn't make any sense. We started looking deeper into it. And we can also see uh, device type, or at least vendor. And then we started notice, noticing this massive difference between different device types and different vendors and how, how these behave. And even, even with the same capabilities. Like if the ones that have the same amount of, 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 of uh, oh, yeah, the, the same ankle to eleven capabilities and, and the same amount of antennas. So this should should behave like similarly, but they don't. And we also noticed that there's a big difference 